Five Nights at Freddy's, Ruin, a novelisation. Part 1. Based on the Steel Wool Studios video game, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, Ruin. Characters originally created by Scott Cawthorne. Written and performed by Joseph Chambers. My name is Cassie. I am 11 years old, and this is the story of how I killed the robots. I want to say this. I do not think I will ever kill anything else in my life intentionally. I didn't like killing them, and I don't think they even count because they weren't alive. Well, actually, I'm not even sure about that part, to be honest. Things started to get a bit weird when Gregory stopped turning up for school. His real name was Andrew, and all the teachers and all the other kids at school called him that. But me and him were so close, he shared with me that he liked to pretend his name was Gregory, and that he had a completely different life to his own. He never told me that his parents tortured him, but let's be real, it was pretty obvious. He would always lie about his injuries that he came to school with and claimed that he was just clumsy. But I just knew. He was very coordinated at sports and he never had accidents at school. When he disappeared, I feared the worst. My gut told me that his parents had killed him. I dared not tell any adults about any of this, though. Number one, they would probably not believe me and number two... I got the feeling that it would only make things worse for Gregory, as since no one else but me seemed to have cottoned on, it meant his parents were covering things up pretty good. No evidence, no conviction. Gregory goes back to his parents and they torture him even more. That was all assuming he was still alive. I did go to his house once. A couple of old married women answered the door and said they got the house cheap after the last owners went missing. And then came the message, a simple text from my phone to Gregory's. I'm trapped in the pizza plex. You need to come and help me. Again, I felt like I couldn't tell my parents as this was the kind of thing that me and Gregory would attempt to prank my parents with. The police would also be a no-go as nobody was meant to go anywhere near that place since it had shut down. I did not want to get Gregory into trouble as his parents assuming they were still alive, would hurt him again. Only one option. I had to go there, and I had to go alone. I spent some of my pocket money on a bus down to a street a couple of blocks away, jumped over the rusted barriers and looked up at the building. The neon signs partially still hung, although some letters had smashed on the ground whilst others had been stolen by bored youths. The Fazbear Pizza Plex now read Ha'ab'er Apple. Most of the building had been coated in chipboard to prevent people seeing it clearly. A sign that was a bit rusted over said, Hold up, Faz fans. We're sorry, but we've had to close this pizza plex for a short while whilst we make repairs. We'll be back soon. I read this sign and sighed. Me and Gregory had both been fans of Fazbear's for a while before he disappeared. He had been more of a fan from a distance, having only seen cartoons when he had come over to my place, completely without his parents' consent, and only tried their pizzas through delivery. The pizzas themselves were hardly anything to write home about. They fell apart too easily, the tomato sauce almost tasted metallic, and the cheese was rubbery to the point of virtually being chewing gum. But you got a toy or a book or a magnet or something with every pizza, and something about the characters was just likeable. There was Monty, an alligator with purple star-shaped glasses, Chica, this girly girl pizza-obsessed chicken, Freddy, who was Gregory's favourite, this kind of cute-looking bear who was orange with blue face paint, and then my personal favourite, Roxy. She was this grey wolf who seemed to be quite highly opinionated of herself, but I just found her vanity almost empowering in some way. 
I guess I thought her message being that of you need to love yourself, otherwise nobody else will, was a fascinating sentiment. I actually once tried to dye my fringe green in an attempt to emulate her signature look, but was told by the head teacher of my school that such things were not appropriate and got sent home. I finished this train of thought and steeled myself for what might lie ahead. Hopefully it wouldn't be too horrible inside this place. It had been abandoned for over a year, but maybe it would just be dusty and dark. Something then clicked. The place had gone bust almost exactly the same time as Gregory had disappeared. I hadn't connected the two events before, because why would I? Maybe my mind was being too imaginative. I saw a bunch of various sized wooden crates and moved them in such a fashion as to create a staircase for myself. This allowed me to climb on top of the doors, which then allowed me to find a small hull with which I could slide myself behind the chipboard and get into the pizza plex. This whole time I'd been telling myself that it wouldn't be too bad and that nothing too creepy could be behind the entrance. That was the quickest and perhaps most ungracefully I have ever been proved wrong. I recognised the main entrance, but barely. The black and white chequered floors were cracked and grime-ridden to an almost comic extent. The golden statue of Freddy had virtually turned to stone with rust and lay in several pieces. Graffiti in various colours decorated the cracked walls. Gregory! Gregory, I got your message. Please come out now. Hi there, everyone. This is Joseph from The Edit. Um, That is all that I've written of this story currently. It's only a thousand words long. But if you like, comment and subscribe to this video, I will endeavour to make more of it and hopefully not only adapt the new DLC Ruin expansion to the Security Breach game, but also finish adapting the original game. This is purely an early test demo. None of it is finalised, but I just wanted to see what your guys' opinion of it is. Um, Thank you all for watching and see you all soon. Bye.